Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day today. I do want to apologize at the beginning of this video. I haven't posted anything for a week. I had a little bit of a medical issue come up this week and had to get that taken care of. So it's going to slow me down over the next couple weeks, but it is not going to stop me. So thank you so much for watching the channel. A uh, big thank you. We're at 21,100 subscribers. Uh, without you guys, that isn't possible. So thank you very much. I also want to say that you can become an eBuzz Central member now for just 99 cents a month. The MVP VIP Pro versions we're still trying to weed out because we still have people that are subscribed to those levels. And once we get them moved, all those perks will transfer over to the eBuzz Central membership. It's a great way to support the channel and a great way to support the content you like. Having said that, I want to say a quick thank you to my newest eBuzz member, which is David Alvarado. Thank you so much. The support on this channel, you will never understand what it means to me. And thank you to all my other members. You are what keeps this channel up and going. I thank you guys so much. If you haven't had a chance to catch some of my previous videos, uh, I've done one recently on MX Linux with its advanced hardware support. Linux terminal commands everybody should know. The part one of my only office series that I'm doing, I'll be back on that and part two will be coming out shortly. And then of course, Microsoft continues attack on open source covering chat GPT and Copilot. Now, when I did this video, I had a lot of good feedback from you uh, viewers out there who agree with me about where AI is going. Uh, but I also had some people out there that said, if you don't understand it, why are you bashing it? So what we're going to do today is something kind of interesting. We are going to be taking a look at chat GPT. And what I want to do is just come over here. We can try it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get it signed up and logged in and then get to a screen. So just sit tight. And once you get everything logged in and brought up, this is the screen you're met with. Now, I do want to tell you that if you want to try this on your own, it does ask for your email address and phone number. So what I did was a made up email address. I went and made one up that I'm not going to be using on a daily basis. And I gave them an online phone number so they wouldn't have my personal information. So it does ask for a little bit of information. Now, what ChatGPT is, it's a generative trainer or chatbot. Um, you go in, you can ask it questions, you can do several different things with it. Uh, what I'm going to do today is try to have a little bit of fun with it and see if it gives me honest answers or if it gives me the cut and dry answers that you're generally going to get if you just do a random DuckDuckGo search, Google search, Bing search, whatever search engine you might be using. So I think it would be fun right now just to go to a new chat. And we're going to come down here on the bottom and you just type in a question. So... My first question today would be, is Linux more secure than Windows? And see what kind of answer it gives me. And it's going to think a little bit, and then it's going to come back and give me an answer. Linux is generally considered to be more secure than Windows due to its open source nature, which allows for a larger and more diverse group of people to review and improve the code, and the fact that it is less commonly targeted by malware. However, Linux systems can still be vulnerable to certain types of attacks, and it is important to keep them updated and properly configured for maximum security. I do agree on keeping them updated and keeping them not vulnerable, but they're a long way away from being attacked the way a Windows machine is. Now, that's a pretty general answer, and I think if you did a Google search or a DuckDuckGo search, you're going to get something probably not worded quite that way, but that's what kind of answer you're going to get. Now, I do want to tell you that if you come in and use ChatGPT, this question that I just queried right here will be saved into the AI, which means if somebody down the road asks this question, it already has this answer pre-programmed in it. Now, next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and ask it a doozy here. Uh, let's come down to the bottom and ask it, does OpenAI use open source code? Let's see what it says. Yes, OpenAI uses open source code in some of its projects. For example, they use the TensorFlow library and open source machine learning framework in many of their projects. Additionally, they have released several of their own open source projects, such as the GPT-3 model and the Hugging Face Transformers library. Now, does OpenAI abide by the open source license? Taking a little longer to get an answer on this one. 
OpenAI is committed to open source and abides by the open source licenses of the software it uses and releases. They make sure to use open source software that are compatible with their own licensing and also release their own code under open source licenses to allow for community contributions and use by others in the field. It's important to note that OpenAI has also some proprietary software and services which are not open source and have different usage terms. Now this is my question. How are we to know, and quite honestly, those of you out there that are watching this video, if OpenAI does use open source code, but then wraps it into a proprietary state, how are we able to go in and see if they're actually using the open source code if they've stamped it proprietary? And I'm going to have people come out of the woodwork, well, that's impossible, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. What if you've got 75% of a program that's you know, their own code, 25%, which is open source code, but they stamp it proprietary and they're not going to share it with you. How do we know that they're not using it? That's what scares me about this technology. That's what scares me about developers out there that are coming up with some great ideas and great code that can be used, but are not getting the attribution that they deserve. Just a small thing there I wanted to talk about. It's, it's silly, but hey, if you've got input, please put that in the comments below. Now, we're going to come up with another question here and see how it gets answered. Oh, I've got to come down to the bottom. Duh. Is Linux a better option than Windows? Well, let's see what it tells us here. It depends on the individual's specific needs and preferences. Linux is known for its stability, security, and flexibility and is often the preferred operating system for programmers, developers, and system administrators. So it's going to give you quite a bit of information here. It is also often free to use and has a large community of users who contribute to its development and support. Windows, on the other hand, is more commonly used in business and home environments and is known for its ease of use and compatibility with many software programs. Both operating systems have their own advantages and disadvantages, so it is important to consider your specific needs before making decision. So it didn't really give a lot of information there. It just kind of went over why Windows is good for some people, Linux is good for other people. So let me ask here, list the reasons someone would use Linux over Windows. Let's see what it does here. So it's giving us a big list. One is cost, two customizability, three security, four stability, five compatibility, six power, seven privacy, eight support. So it does kind of give us some good information there. Now, one thing that people say that chat GPT is going to be good for is education. So let's go ahead and type a new chat. What if we ask it to write a book review of Romeo and Juliet? Let's see if it'll actually write a book review. Well, here we go. And it's writing a book review. The play tells the story of two young lovers. Okay. Now, the question is, is how long is this book review going to be? Is a student going to be able to come in here and type in that question and get a full re book review to be turned into their teachers? That's where things get kind of uh, iffy there. But I do believe at the same time, it would definitely give a good outline for somebody to do a book review. So it's pretty long. It's still going. Now, my question is, is this going to be two or three pages? No, in conclusion. So that's a pretty quick book review there. And I'm pretty sure that if you copied and pasted that and put it into a document, I don't think that would be big enough for a class. But that is pretty, I guess, to say impressive. Now, the question is, can you just go look this up on Google or is it just going to be spitting it out or has this question been asked and answered so many times in chat GPT that it's building its database so it can make these reviews bigger. Let's try a math question. I've already got a algebraic equation saved, which is negative 5y plus 3 equal 2 times 4y plus 12. Now, is it just going to give us the answer or is it going to give us a breakdown of the steps it takes to solve this equation? Let's find out. And there it goes. It looks like it's given us step-by-step -step instructions on how to solve this equation. So not only is it showing us how to get the answer, it's giving us the answer. So it would take, it tells you right here in the first, 
distribute the two on the right side of the equation. Next, combine like terms on both sides of the equation. So for those of you who don't know it's distributing the two, if you go up here, you go ahead and make this 8y plus 24. It's done that down here. And then next, combine like terms on both sides of the equation, which would give you 5y and 8y. Seeing how that's negative 5 and then 8, that would be negative 13y equals 21. They've taken the 3 and removed it from the 24. And then finally, divide both sides of the equation by negative 13 to solve for y. And then so y equal 21 over 13 is the solution to the equation. Now, I'm not a math genius out there, but my question to y'all is, is that correct? So if we come down here and we go ahead and paste that again, and we take the negative off of it, and we make this 6, and we go right here and we make that 3, and then we try to solve for that, will it change this up quite a bit? So it's telling us to distribute 3 again, combine the terms, and finally divide both sides by negative 7 to solve for y. Okay, so I'm not a math genius, so those of you out there watching this video, if that is the correct answer, please let me know in the comments below. Next thing I want to try is something pretty obvious here. Does open AI steal open source code? Open AI is a research organization that aims to promote and develop friendly AI in a responsible way. They use open source code and also contribute to open source community by releasing some of their own code and models. They have a dedicated page for open source where they share their code and models for other researchers, students, and developers to use and build on. OpenAI is committed to open source and they do not steal open source code. Do they respect open source licenses? OpenAI respects open source licenses and abides by the terms and conditions of the licenses under which the open source software they use is distributed. Has Copilot stolen open source code? Interesting. Has Copilot stolen open source code? And it comes back with... As an AI language model, I don't have information about OpenAI specific products and their development process. So in other words, this is just your general kind of zip over everything and go right back to updates their open source policies, ensures compliance with open source licenses, but that doesn't really touch on what Copilot has done. I mean, guys, we could sit here for hours and ask questions and put in math problems, but at the end of the day, you got to understand Everything that I've just typed in here is now saved into this chat GPT's database. So anybody else that asks these questions in the future will get similar responses. And it's just learning and ingesting all of this information. I still stand beside what I said previously that I don't believe that Copilot and chat GPT are giving proper attribution or giving uh, respect to the licenses of some of the code that they are using. If you disagree with me, please let me know in the comments below. But that was really just a quick look at ChatGPT. Like I said, you can go check it out if you want to. It's really easy to find. Uh, open AI, just do a search on it, and you can be using something like this within five minutes. But I do tell you that they do ask for an email address, and they will want your phone number. So I've taken security steps there where they wouldn't get it. So what do y'all think? Do you still agree, disagree with me? Do you think... Uh, AI is the way of the future. Do you think OpenAI is giving the proper attribution and respect to the open source licenses of the code that it is using? Whatever you might think. Maybe you have an opinion. Please drop that in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month. But that's not all. We are also on Nutrion, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month. Or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee. Maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation. Or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video. And I will see you in the next video.